In the year 1914, Archduke Franz Ferdinand, heir to the Austria-Hungarian throne, began a trip to bosnia Herzegovina. Who could have known that one wrong turn from his driver is what would ultimately lead to his assassination that day? This lone, lethal bullet launched a series of events that had never been seen before. In the end, 17 million people would die as 32 countries across the globe battled it out. This may be the most extreme backfire of all time. I am Jake Storielli. We will talk about the original Franz Ferdinand Take Me Out on Laughs from the Past. Take me out. You like that song? I say you don't know. You say you don't know. I say take me out. That song. Those lyrics are pretty interesting. I say don't you know. You say you don't know. I say take me out. What do you think he means by that? I know I won't be leaving him. So if no you're lonely. Yeah, I don't know. Well, transferred in a good band. Welcome to season five, episode four, I believe, of Laughs from the Past. We've had a lot of fun on this season so far. It's historical backfires. Shout out to intern Luke putting this together for us. We got a good one today. Franz Ferdinand. I've heard about this assassination attempt, Jake. I've heard lore that it's hilarious, but I've never gotten sure. into the details of it. Do you know uh, anything about Franz Ferdinand besides the band, or is the band your no? No, I mean, I think this is this is oddly one of the only things I feel like that gets somewhat hammered into your brain, is that this one assassination kicked off the World War. But even after that, like, they explain it in class, but they don't actually. Like, they're just like, yeah, you know, he gets assassinated, and you're like, oh, wow, he must have been pretty important. And they're like, eh, he's around. Mm. Eh. Yeah, I don't even really know what he looks like. I'm going to Google this. He had a title. Franz Ferdinand. It sucks that, like, I love history, but even I, I just hear that, and I think of the song in the band. Oh, great mustache on Franz, Jake. Okay, I could see that. Great mustache on Franz. Decent hair, too. Wow. All right, so last week we did an assassination attempt. R.I.P. Assassination of Julius Caesar. They stabbed him in the back a bunch. This is a little different. Are you excited about this one? Should I just get into it? I think we could get into it. Yeah, I think my main statement is kind of what I said before. I think the... The assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand is well known, but none of the actual information behind it. All right, if you don't know, you're like, about I, to know. I, I think America would do pretty well on Jeopardy if it was like something around that. Okay. As the summer of 1914, my Nana was three years old, hmm. approached, the balance of power in Europe looked shaky at best. It would only it would take only a single crisis the assassination of archduke franz ferdinand heir to the austro-hungarian throne and his wife sophie chotek by a young bosnian serb nationalist in sarajevo to push the continent's six major powers into world war one which devastated the continent and killed some 17 million Soldiers and civilians. Right off the bat, it seems like they're putting a little too much on this event leading to World War One. Seems like it, it was kind of inevitable, but well, maybe we'll learn. Right. If if this was the tipping point, 
just feels like we were looking an excuse for a tipping point. Yeah, yeah. But I am interested to find out why they wanted Franz dead. Is he a bad guy? Like, I don't even know anything. I think they said, they said what? He was killed by a Serbian nationalist? They, I mean, the two countries must have been on, on bad terms, right? Yeah. But for all its historic importance, says this article, France, Ferdinand, and Sophie's deaths may not have happened at all if it weren't for an odd series of events and decisions and a wrong turn that placed the royal couple squarely in the path of their assassin's gun. I hate when that happens. Take a wrong turn, and now you run into your assassin? Yeah, and I mean, I, I'm actually really skeptical about that right now because, okay, all right, and I mean, we're, we're going to find out, but so the assassin was in the wrong spot? <laughs> a bad assassin. Because that's the current information we have. How many assassins do you think are just in the wrong spot for you right now? And, like, think about that. This guy's... This guy's such a renowned assassin. He takes out Archduke Ferdinand, but he was in the wrong spot? I don't know. Why was Franz in Sarajevo? I don't know if I'm saying that right. In addition to being the heir to his uncle's throne, Archduke Franz Ferdinand was also Inspector General of the Austro-Hungarian Army, which had decided to hold its summer military exercises in Sarajevo, the Bosnian capital. Back in I think you're ni- way off on that one. Yeah, I'm saying we, it like we, it's a Latin word. Yeah, I think we have to... Uh, Bosnian capital. Because I think it's a word that you we can say, but I think right now we're not that All close right, well, to it. There's a J in there that I'm saying as if it's a you know, Latin, Latin American word. Is it Sarajevo? No. I mean, even that sounds like too much. I think it's like easier than we're making. Hold on. I got it. Sarajevo is what they're saying in my ear. Enunciation. Sarajevo. Okay. Sarajevo. Makes sense. Sarajevo. 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 There it is. Sarajevo. It's a Y. Sarajevo. 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 Okay, so why was Franz Ferdinand in Sarajevo? In addition to being the heir to his uncle's throne, Archduke Franz Ferdinand was also Inspector General of the Austro-Hungarian Army, which had decided to hold its summer military exercises in Sarajevo, in the Bosnian capital. Back in 1908, the dual monarchy of Austria-Hungary had annexed Bosnia and Erzegovina. Erze- Erzegovina, Erzegovina, a region that had previously been under the control of the Ottoman Empire. Home to a largely Slavic population, Bosnia and Erzegovina had nationalist ambitions of their own, but nearby Serbia wanted to incorporate them into the pan-Slavic empire. That's cool. Hey, we're making an empire, and you're part of it. Jim, do you know why... Bosnians kind of have a re- te- reputation for being kind of rough people. No, I didn't know Bosnians did. I don't know much about the people of Bosnia. So they got screwed. Um, if you look at a map yep. of, of Bosnia, you'll see it's, it's surrounded by Serbia, Croatia, Montenegro. Jim, Bosnia, Herz- Herzegovina, there's no Her- Herzegovina. Croatia cock blocked it from the water. And it's all these beautiful water towns. And Croatia just cleaned up the coast. Yeah, it's like Rhode Island stole Connecticut's coastline, besides the sound, which who cares about but that? But yeah, it's like it's like a lot more severe than that. Um, yeah, because Croatia's beautiful. They got completely boxed out on all like the pretty towns, which should be a part of their country. So they're uh, they're not they're not happy campers. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's pretty cool that you can just like like Chile. Chile's just like we got the clo- coast. It's like Dude, how was I mean, that fair? At, I mean, Dubrovnik, I think, is supposed to be one of the more beautiful cities in the world. It looks like it should be fully cut off from Croatia. But they've still got it. Dude, I mean, I know that we're talking about Bosnia and Croatia. Can you just Google Chile map? 
They stole yeah. the entire coastline from Argentina. Yeah. How did Argentina allow that? Like, you got got so bad, Argentina. Right at a certain point, you're just like, we're taking half. Yeah. Give us some of that back. It's an, it's ridiculous when you look at the Chile, Chile map. Yeah. Honestly, so people unreal. must people must like drive Chile as a road trip, right? I would guess so. Krause's best friend from high school was from Chile. There you go. What that? Anyway, all right. Nick the Dick. Uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, they're trying to steal Serbia for their new Pan Slavic Empire. But right. they're weary of Serbia's ambitions for territorial expansion. Austria, Hungary had sought and received assurances from Germany that it would stand behind the dual monarchy in case of war with Serbia and Serbia's powerful ally, Russia. So you got Austria, Hungary, and the Germans versus Serbia and Russia. By choosing to hold its military exercises in Sarajevo, in June 1914, and to send the heir to the throne to oversee them, Austria-Hungary intended to make a show of force to warn Serbia against any further expansion and aggression. They're trying to put on a display. Don't fuck with us display. Right. Yeah. Mil- the old military flex. In the years leading up to World War I, a series of agreements between the powers of Europe helped determine where and when battle lines were drawn. On June 28th, there was, it was a momentum date for the Serbians. June 28th was particularly significant for Serbia. It was St. Vitus Day, the anniversary of the Serbian defeat in Kosovo by Ottoman forces in 1389. Wow, still celebrating. That's cool. Yeah. And this would be the first celebration of the occasion since Serbia had won back Kosovo in the Second Balkan War. Wow. Whoa. Jeez, we're in the year 1914 and they're celebrating a victory in eighteen in 1389 for the first time since they won it back. How'd they even remember? It seems it's like a hundred it's a hundred years ago celebrating something, what, seven hundred years ago? It's a little fugazi. There's a lot going on. I think you're making up fake holidays at this point. Again, like every everything right now is pointing to like the world needed a war and we're just looking for excuses. Yeah. Okay. Um, Serbian nationalists saw the Archduke's visit to Sarajevo. On this of all Sarajevo, Sarajevo. On this of all days, which is eggs in Spanish. Sarajevo, Sarajevo, Sarajevo. There you go, Sarajevo. Well, they saw his visit to Sarajevo on this day of all days as an unforgivable insult, and they sought Hmm. to strike back. Oh, that's so fake! You didn't know we were celebrating our victory from. 1389 for the first time in our country's history on this date you think you can just roll on through when we're celebrating the defeat of kosova in 1389 like archduke's like whoa Whoa. what are you celebrating how was i supposed to know it seems very much like you just made that up just to be upset with me the term unforgivable is low-key hilarious this is unforgivable this is unforgivable Nothing I can do for crashing <laughs> the party. I didn't know. I didn't even know about the defeat. We could get you guys that coastline back. That's that wouldn't do it for this ruining one party. Unforgivable, Jake. Yeah, they were searching for reasons. Yeah. Despite warnings of possible terrorist attacks during the visit to Bosnia, few official security precautions were taken. Franz Ferdinand and Sophie traveled in an open car, and the route their motorcade would take through Sarajevo had been made public well beforehand. They're trying to flex, though, so, like, I get it. Right. If you're, like, if you're doing things discreet or you're hiding, that doesn't go in turn with the flexing you're trying to do. Yeah, it's not confident. On the morning of June 28th, seven young Bosnian Serbs with ties to a Serbian ultra-nationalist group called the Black Hand. It's a lot of groups, I feel like, called the Black Hand. 
Peaky Blinders, there's a black hand. I feel like it's like kind of lame at this point. You need to come up with something new. Well, at the time, it might have been. I, I don't know. I'm not sure how the different black hands established themselves. It'd just be like making a gang and calling yourself like the Grim Reapers. It's like, okay. Right. Lame. Well, that's my. Okay, that's my gang name. So. Yeah. Lame. So the, the Black Hand placed themselves along the route. They had strapped explosives to their bodies, carried loaded revolvers, and were all equipped with cyanide so they could commit suicide rather than be caught. Dude. It's believing in a cause, man. They broke I, up the party about winning Cavosa. Uh, 700 years ago. You, you <laughs> unforgivable. <laughs> Man, I think I think people like without the entertainment industry, people were just itching for fights. Like, I'm going to die for this? I think it's like, it's if TV, to let- if, tel- if television exists, this doesn't happen. Oh, yeah. It, it's, I mean, it's also, I mean, it's part boredom. It's part, like, legacy. Like, I mean, it, uh, if this guy, like you mentioned, he's, he's not going to go on to be a famous stand-up comedian. Like, if, if he wants to be remembered for all the years, you, you, take, you and your Black Hand members take out Archduke Ferdinand. And here we are talking about him. As the motorcade rolled along the Apple Quay, a major street running through the center of Sarajevo, a Bosnian Serb named Nedel- Nedelcho, Nedelko. I'm going to call him Nedel. Nedels. Oh, shit. They're throwing a last name at me, too, here, Jake. Yeah, that, uh, that, that was the part I was wondering if I needed to read because um, I'm interested. Are you reading the funny part right now? Um, I don't know. I'm in the article. Nadelko oh, okay. Kabrinovic. Nadelko Kabrinovic. He threw a bomb towards the Archduke's car. Yeah. Just threw a bomb. Threw a bomb. They have any throwing? Right? Like, what year is it? 1914. Like, I, I don't know. It's one. It's, it's, a, it's a very quick hitting stand up joke. I think it's from that guy you and I tried to listen to, Brian Reagan, and he was way too yelly. Um, but I think he's talking about going through airport security. <laughs> he's, he's, he's talking about something like, what are they looking for? And the, he just he says kind of under his breath, he's like, is that, a bo- <laughs> is that a bowling ball with a candle in it? Just the old image of a bomb that you picture from a cartoon? Like, yep. is that what this guy had? No idea. But my question was, were there any throwing sports in Bosnia? Like, we got football and baseball to give young American boys good arms. I right. mean, if you, if you see some, how do you throw this bomb? I'm picturing underhand shuffle or like just the um, very handball is pretty popular in that part of the world. Right? No idea. Maybe. Um, water polo. Oh, water polo is huge. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I think, I think every you think country Nadelko has to had a have good a arm? throw it. Let's I, I'm going to time out. Cause this, this cuts to my core. Every country has to have throwing sports, right? I don't know. I don't care what it is. You got to throw something. I don't know. Some people okay. throw weird, naturally. Oh, I know. I seen it. I think this guy's got a bad arm. Well, anyway, the driver managed to accelerate out of the way. Right. That's a lob. He lobbed it. Okay, so there's some air under it. How could you accelerate out of the way of a bomb unless there's a lot of air? I don't know. I feel like I'm trying to picture you. You're trying to throw something heavy. And like, I don't know, you just run out of the way of it. If someone tries to throw a medicine ball at you, like you can accelerate out of the way pretty easily. Yeah, but this is a car and a bomb. Right. Cars move pretty quickly. I need a visual here. Because like, is he like yeah. right on the roadside? How do you, I don't think the car, I think he like just a, missed the car. Is it a I'm not grenade? Giving the, I'm not giving the car credit. Is it a grenade? I think you need to give the car some credit. I think he just Dude, missed. You, you he see me come, you're coming down the road, okay? You're driving in a vehicle going miles per hour, and you see me, 
and I've got a snowball in my hand. You don't think you you have a chance of evading that? No, not if I can only go forward or back. Otherwise, you're a terrible throw. Oh, I could dodge you in a car so easily. We're talking about just a straight one-lane road. Yeah, man. Cars can go fast. Yeah, I think this guy didn't lead the car. It was a bad pass. Right, but that's what I'm saying. I mean, you only get so many attempts at throwing a bomb at something. Like, I, I think you're, you're going too harsh on the thrower here. Well, anyway, the throw hit the car behind the car he was aiming at, so I think it's a lob right. job. And uh, it injured several people in that car, including the uh, General Oscar Pitorek, governor of Bosnia. So that's bad. Mm. So then the guy who threw the bomb, Nedeljko Kabrinovic, took his cyanide and threw himself into the nearby river. Yeah. How'd that work out for him, Jim? Um, the poison for didn't. Two? The poison didn't work. The river was too low for him to drown, so he just stood up and they arrested him. It's embarrassing. Hey, did you just throw that bomb out of the car? Do you think there was a genuine comedic moment? No, because the bomb probably did explode. So they probably he like, yells, "I'm eating this cyanide." He says his last words, "You'll never, you'll never beat the black hand." He eats the cyanide, and he's like, "I think <laughs> ah, we, I think we swapped out the cyanide with the tums again." <laughs> there had to be a moment when he's in the river, knowing, knowing, like just waiting to die, and they're like look, looking at him. And they're like, too late, suckers. I hate the cyanide. Long live Serbia. Blah, blah, blah. The black hand. And then he gets to the end of his speech. And he's like, holy fuck. I'm still alive? I'm not dying. He's like, okay, I'm going to drown myself. And they're like all getting near him now. So I think, there's, I think there's a point where he goes face down in the water for like two seconds. And there's like 10 people around him. Like, it, Does he really think... We're going to let him drown himself in front of us? If you are the uh, Archduke's people, you got to let him like do all this. You don't go grab him. Like In the end, he's going to have to just walk to you and be like, okay, take me in. That's what I'd do. One person, one person laughed. I can oh, confirm that. The Archduke. I can confirm He's that. the only one that didn't care about the guy behind him. Right. So... Uh, <laughs> They took him to jail. The Archduke wasn't easily scared off. We're entitled to ask ourselves why. At this point, the Archduke didn't simply call the visit off. Christopher Clark, a professor of modern European history at the University of Cambridge and author of The Sleepwalkers, How Europe Went to War, told NPR's All Things Considered in 2014. What an exhausting, like, end of that sentence. That was proposed by some members of his entourage, said Clark, but he hated being told what to do. He was a very irritable man, and he said, don't be ridiculous. I'm with Bad the boy. arch. I'm with him. This is uh, the whole goal of this was to intimidate them. Right. Terror. So we're, we're going to let this dumbass. Right. Who failed miserably intimidate us. We cannot. We yeah. shall not. I'm with the Archduke you there. You cannot. Archduke is... Pr- Archduke at this point is happy he ruined the party. Yeah, he's happy that someone tried to kill him. He would have been embarrassed if they hadn't. Yeah. Instead, the group continued on to Sarajevo City Hall, where they met with dignitaries, including the mayor, who failed to alter his prepared speech about the happy and enthusiastic greeting Sarajevo's citizens were offering the Archduke. That's tough. Whoops. (laughs) Whoops. <laughs> well, we're so happy to have you, Archduke. We hope you had a great ride through the countryside, waving to our citizens, excited to see you extend our peace. Archduke's like, <clears throat> <clears throat> you guys tried to kill me. See, I've I've got a little different than that. I've got the Archduke rolls up. Like you said, he's still peacocking a little bit. He's like, oh, it's... You know, great, great to meet you, dignitaries. Um, By the way, we did try to get bombed and killed on the way here. And the guy's like, oh, my God, 
those those people don't represent us. Don't don't worry about that. There's an intern that wrote the speech that was coming up that was like then bumping the guy and was like, "Hey, hey, we uh we might want to tweak a couple parts in here um cuz it's all about welcoming him and we had people try to kill him with a bomb." And he's like, "Shut up, intern." And he still rolled with it. And then afterwards was like, "Intern, why didn't you tell me?" And the intern was like, "Come on, man." I really tried. I tried so hard. Really tried. As Clark recounted in his book, Franz Ferdinand furiously interrupted the mayor's speech, exclaiming, I come here as your guest and your people greet me with bombs. Mm. Before his wife, Sophie, was able to calm him down. After Franz Ferdinand made his own speech and tended to some official business, he wanted to visit the injured adjutant how do you say that a jote no like i'm brain mush when i see this word i think it's a common word where are the letters here it's uh a d j u t a n t adjunct adjunct it's not how that word looks but what did you say at first i've said it phonetically adjutant you're adding another syllable no i'm not Adjutant is how it's spelled. I think it's adjunct, but that's not how it's spelled. A D J U N C T. No, A D J U T A N T. Okay, then. Okay, so those are different words. That's what I thought. Um, adjutant. Yeah, you're there. Right. Awesome. What's it mean? It's a military officer. Cool. Well, Franz or and- or it's a large black and white stork stork with a massive bill. Okay, found so in mostly India and so a- East Asia. This whole time, I thought that the second car it was you know his second in command that died, but it could have been a giant bird. You're telling me could have just been a bird. That the- <laughs> it could have just been a giant bird that they named Oscar Pitarek. <laughs> I, I genuinely there's a chance oscar pitterick is still a giant bird yes okay uh okay um where were we at for security reasons it was decided that the motorcade should proceed out of the city via the appel quay rather than take its planned route along franz joseph street and into the narrow streets of sarajevo's bazaar district Unfortunately, the drivers didn't pick up on this changed itinerary. What? How do you not tell the drivers? Who else could have been told that the drivers weren't told that they're going a different route, Jake? Uh, maybe it was two positions at the time. You had a driver and a GPS guy. You had Maybe, dude, that's how you got around, right? You had to have a map guy. But if you change the directions you're going, how do you not tell the drivers? No, what it is, there's probably one lead car and all the other drivers are just told, follow the lead car. You got to tell that. Either way, the fact that you changed the route you're driving and you don't tell the lead driver, uh, it's for gaze. It's fake. It's something, something's up. It's not just, unfortunately, the drivers didn't get the new itinerary. They're the only people that should get it. I think I think you got to go back in time a little bit, man. I think we got a lot of followers. I think we got one person in the know, and everyone else just follow follow the person in front of you. Oh, okay. the The very next sentence is the explanation. Okay. They were talking about the new route in German, and the driver of the first car was Czech, <laughs> and so is the driver of the second car. They don't understand what the conversation's about, and no one translated it for them. So that's even worse. It's still just as dumb. That's, uh, that's a lot worse. <laughs> as a result, the first car turned out, turned on to Franz Joseph Street, followed by the second car, carrying Franz Ferdinand, Sophie, and Potirek, the bird. Amazingly, this wrong term took them right to where 19-year-old Gavrili Princip had stationed himself along the original published route for the motorcade under the awning of a general store. So that's why they took a wrong turn into their uh, assassins. 
But didn't I feel like we talked about this? Uh, uh, maybe it was on here. Maybe it was elsewhere. weren't we talking about how easy like basic communication is? Maybe was that a was that a last from the past? We were talking about how like with hand signals and stuff, like you can you oh, can yeah, get yeah. through a conversation. Like how how did this not take place? I don't know, man. The whole thing's like seems like they were set up. Yeah. Uh, it's probably not true that Princip had stopped to get a sandwich as one popular myth about the assassination goes. Okay. Thanks for clearing that up. Sandwich yeah. thing isn't true. Feels like it's true now, though, when you present it like that. He definitely didn't stop to get a sandwich. Well, okay. Seems like maybe he did. Could have. As- or it was like a big, it was a big argument point. And yeah. so like whenever this story got reported, that person got to talk and they were like, yeah, and we didn't get a sandwich. And they they're were like, saying okay. they're saying that the assassin was just getting a sandwich. Yeah, and then and then they drove by. Well, anyway, as no. uh, Potiric the bird yelled at the driver that he had taken a wrong turn, the car slowed to a stop right in front of Princip the assassin, who fired two shots into the car, hitting Franz Ferdinand and his wife at point blank range. If Princip had spent his entire life learning about human anatomy, he couldn't have placed his shots better than he did. They were both lethal. Maybe he did spend his entire life. That was a dumb statement. That was a dumb... Who wrote that sentence? You Um, get mad at a bad sentence. I rarely do. That's awful. uh, Well, Sarah Pruitt wrote it, but she's she's like quoting something that she read. Oh, Clark, the, the guy who had the longest title in the history of the world. So. Okay, I was I was assuming it was that guy because if you were studying human anatomy as much as you possibly could, that that doesn't make you aim your shot any better. So like, no. get out of here, Clark. And also, okay, if he had spent his entire life learning about human anatomy, he couldn't have placed his shots better than he did. Well, I haven't spent a single fucking second of my life learning about human anatomy, but I'm going to guess the brain's a good place to shoot someone. Brain, heart. Yeah. Those those are the two big ones from everything I've learned. Why does this guy, Clark, think that you need to go to school to find out where to kill where to shoot someone? This sentence, When you really think about that sentence, it's awful. It should say if Princip had spent his entire life training to be a sniper, he still right. couldn't have placed his shots any better than he did. Bingo. Wow. Clark, you're an author, dude. Why don't you uh, author that sentence better? Boom roasted. You're a professor or some shit at Cambridge? That's a Get re- out of here. It's a real bad sentence, Jake. Thank you. I'm, I'm sorry. I mean, I can barely read and write, but that's unacceptable. Have you seen the picture of the assassin? I have not. He looks like such an angry fucking twerp. Oh, yeah. Go look at it. I'm, I'm guessing they also took this picture and he had been like beaten up and not allowed to sleep. Where am I clicking? The, uh, the more story article. The more story article. Clicking. Scroll down a little bit. Scrolling down a little bit. Little mustache, uh, real dark bags under his eyes. Little mustache, dark bag. Oh, yeah. Bing. Describe him. Gavrilio Princip in jail awaiting trial. Um, yeah, it's almost like it's a bad mustache. Mm-hmm. It's all it's he can a grow. bad mustache. He's 19 years old. Yeah, he's a, he's a kid. Um, now it's making me a little sad. I don't know. He he does look like a tour. He looks like he has super. Sm- he looks like he has the shoulders of like a thirteen year old boy. Yeah, he's a little twerp. A little twerp. Well, the, who is Gavrilo Princip? He was the son of a Bosnian farmer. Princip had tried to enlist as a Serb guerrilla in nineteen twelve when the Serbs were fighting the Ottoman Empire. But he was rejected as too small and weak. Oh, we nailed it. Yeah. I'm telling you, man, TV saved a lot of wars, I think. As a student in Belgrade in 1914, he and several other earnest young ultra-nationalists decided to try and win a victory for their cause by assassinating the Archduke during the planned visit to Sarajevo. 
armed by connections in the Serbian military and the shadowy ultra-nationalist organization, the Black Hand. Princip and his fellow assassins headed to the Bosnian capital. In addition to Kabrinovic and Princip, several of the young terrorists had opportunities to act against the royal motorcade, but backed off. They were scarcely more than boys, really, really inexperienced. They simply froze with terror as the car approached. One of them ran away. Another one just remained stock still, unable to move. <laughs> Freezing up is kind of funny. Whenever, like, re- like when deers actually freeze up, it's pretty hilarious. Yeah, it's kind of wild. Have you ever frozen up? I would think at some point. I can't remember I mean, my, one right now. My my closest thing is I had a Spanish presentation where I I didn't know the words and I, I mean I just went up there and tried to mumble some stuff. I I think it's as close to freezing up as I've ever been. I'm trying to think of times. I definitely have to have at some times. So yeah. In the aftermath of the Franz Ferdinand's assassination, Princip Kabrinovic and most of the other conspirators were arrested and tried in Sarajevo. Because he was under 20 years old, too young to be executed under Austro-Hungarian law, Princip received a sentence of 20 years in prison. Not even life? Too young to execute him? But they're not even... What? The options are execute or 20 years? Just a slap on the wrist. It's like... Don't do it, it again. If he was a year older, you'd execute him. Dude, okay. So if he was 40 years old, you'd execute him. But because he's 20, he's going to be free at 40 years old? That makes no sense. made a mistake. In 1918, Princip would die of tuberculosis in Therestat, a prison in northern Bosnia, which years later would be used by the Nazis as a concentration camp in World War II. He got killed. He got killed. Yeah. Uh, If you try to tell me he died of tuberculosis, Oh, Go I on. Just, what did he try to tell you he died tuberculosis? of? Turbulence. Turbulence. No one's ever died Death of turbulence. by turbulence. After that fateful wrong turn, a young student's two gunshots in Sarajevo provided the necessary spark that would upset the fragile balance of power in Europe and send the world to war. On July 28, 1914, One month after Franz Ferdinand's death, Austria-Hungary declared war on Serbia, beginning a chain reaction that would lead to four years of horrific conflict with millions of people dead. So, this one's interesting, Jake. Right. Because... I don't know if this is truly a backfire. And intern Luke, when he made this episode for us, was trying to figure it out as well. Because it's not like the Serbian government issued this assassination. It was some young, ultra-nationalist, right. uh, you know, radical group. And that radical group wanted war, I'm guessing. Guessing they would have like yeah. chosen war. And they got war. Now, because they lost, is that a backfire? It just seems like you lost the war you wanted. It is It is a tricky thing to navigate because it's, I, I mean, chaos groups or whatever it is. I don't know. You almost think there's like a degree to it. It's kind of like you're picturing like high school kids doing a prank. Like if if you had, if you were just dumb high school kids and like, someone like let out the air out of one of their buddy's tires Mm -hmm. and then like that buddy crashed their car or something like you, you didn't want those side effects. Like the black hand was probably like, we're all in on, on let's get this archduke out of here. We hate these guys. You know, we, we want to be our own people or whatever they wanted. They probably didn't want, if you told them this will lead to the death of 17 million people, I, I mean, we talked about one guy already froze up on the street from the one incident. Never mind if you dropped the magnitude of what happened after. Yeah. I don't know. I think that this little twerp would have been like, good. 
I hate my people too. I think he was just an asshole. Yeah. It's a terrorist. Yeah. It's an act of terror. It was an act of terror. But. I mean, is the backfire hiring Germans to direct Czech people? <laughs> the, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a backfire. Hey, um, we published the first route. And we know there's assassins waiting on the route that we publish because they know about it. So we're going to take another route. Nod if you understand me. And then he nods at him like a baby. So then the driver just doesn't understand a thing. But like, okay. Yeah. Good. Cool. And then does the complete opposite. Yeah, he did know what happened, Jim. Know how when somebody says something and you don't hear it and you just give them the like, the little head nod, like hoping the conversation goes away. That's exactly what happened. Like the German guy was like, all right, here's the deal. Play it cool. We're changing the directions. If you understand what I'm saying, give me a little head nod. Check guy, no idea what's going on. Just gave him a little head nod and a smile. Like, okay, he's going to stop talking to me, right? Stop talking to him. Here we are. Yeah. Do you think the drivers were in on it? No, Jim, I I think the biggest thing that, and I mean, maybe we'll have our guy reach out with the longest title ever that can't write a sentence. Um, It just, it feels like the world was very ready for war. Oh yeah. They, they made up a fake holiday just to get upset. It's like, it's like if someone walks into my house tomorrow, how dare you walk into my house on the first anniversary of the time I beat Jake in wiffle ball. I'm celebrating right. here. Right. Like, how was I supposed talk, to know? Talk about fake holidays. I didn't hear you, but I'm guessing you said talk about fake coincidences. I don't know what you think I said. Fake events. You'll have to listen to the tape. So the true they, loser so in I the need, story. I, do need, I need you to research one thing. Okay. Does Bosnia still celebrate that holiday? Because think about that, Jim. We are 700 years removed from a holiday. We're about to rip one off. It leads to World War I. Does that holiday ever get celebrated again? All right, let me find out. Let me, what was the name of the holiday? No idea. It sounded like Kosovo, but there's a different letter. Is like Kosovo or something. St. St. Vitus Day. Vitus. V-I-T-U-S. How would you say that in your best Serbian accent? Give me the letters one more time. V-I-T-U-S. Vitus. Vitus. Uh, It's celebrated on June 28th or June 15th, according to the Julian calendar. It looks like it's still celebrated. Yeah, it looks like it's still celebrated. Okay. A lot of popes and stuff. Love to get out there for that. All right. St. Vetus Day, 2018. Let's see. Was Vetus a pope? Maybe. Um, yeah, it doesn't look like it's like a big holiday. It's, yeah, it doesn't it, sound it, like a big holiday. It exists. So anyway, this left the World War I where you know, so many people died. You know how many Serbians died in World War I? Uh, no. 46% of their mobilized forces. Jesus. I think that was the most by uh, any country. Like the most percentage of their forces that died was Serbia. Yikes. It's tough. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to look at it again because this website sucks. Right. Whatever. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot of people. 
I think war was happening no matter what. That is a crazy assassination attempt, though. The first guy messed up. The second guy has the luckiest shot of his life. So the big losers in the story are the innocent Serbians that didn't like what the Black Hand was doing. Franz Ferdinand and his wife, Sophie, and his uh, adjutant. And the right. biggest loser is Clark. Jake? Christopher yeah. Clark. Christopher Clark, a professor of modern European history at the University of Cambridge and author of The Sleepwalkers, How Europe Went to War. You know, I'm not going to read his book now because of that one sentence. It's just so yeah. dramatic for no, no, no reason. It's a tough I, break. too, will not read his book due to that one sentence. It's tough. He could have studied anatomy for years, and that would have been the only place, that would have been the best place to hit him. Holy shit, did you just shoot that guy right in the head? How did you know to shoot him there? Did you study anatomy for years? No. No, 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 no. Just seemed like the most fucking obvious place when trying to kill someone. Yeah, no, I just, um, I don't know, people die, and it's usually the head or the heart, so. So you didn't study human anatomy for years? For years, just for this one shot? No. Because that makes sense. Yeah. I'm, I'm a world-renowned killer of men, and I study the body. Yeah. That's dumb. <laughs> Big-time loser of this story. God. All right. All right. That's the end. How do you feel Have about it? Have they done any good? Whoa. Wow. Microphone just fell. Have they done any good like movies around World War One or this assassination or anything? They've definitely done good World War One movies, but let me see. Franz Ferdinand. You're a World War Two over World War One guy, right? Yeah, World War One. This is like weird. World War One's like too brutal, man. They didn't know right. what they were doing. They thought the machine gun right. would, would mean less casualties because the war would end faster, but it just meant way more casualties. And then, like, there were some people that tried to, like, ride with horses into machine guns. In 2014, a movie came out called Sarajevo. Uh, the Day That Shook the World is a 1975 Czech movie. Yeah, it seems like um, Sarajevo's on Netflix. I don't looks like I'm a new film. It. Wow, it looks like a new film, Jake. Wow, who's in it? Wow. Hold on. Know who should know who should play the uh the little rat punk character? Who's that? The brother from Hannah Montana that you compare me to? I never in my life. But yeah, he'd make a Often. good he'd make a good princip. He'd make a very good princip. All right, Sarajevo. Came out in 2014, a TV movie. Yikes. And it looks awful. Yeeps. And it's, it's in uh, whatever language they speak in Serbia, which makes me sound stupid. Yeah. German. It's in Serbi German. Oh, wow. It's in German. That's how so. the initial misunderstanding happened. The still shots from it are pretty fun. I mean, I know that this is a shot of them about to die. Oh, I can't send you links anymore. I'll go to the last yeah. from the past doc and scroll to the okay. very scroll to the very top underneath prohibition. This is in inside inside in fight inside insight for everyone. Inside insight. Click that picture from the from the movie Sarajevo. <laughs> <laughs> it looks great, right? That looks great. It looks great. Um. I just went to the IMDb Sarajevo and looked at the pictures, and it's a shot of the Franz Ferdinand and his wife Sophie in the back of their car. And it just looks like a fun time, to be honest. I know it looks like a fun time. I know this is the scene in which they probably die, but it looks good. It's got a chitty chitty bang bang feel to it. This the shot. <laughs> a little bit. Uh, all right that ends this episode we will be back next week with another episode of laughs from the past we thank you very much if you enjoy please leave a rating and a review 